All right, today we're going to be looking at loops in Python. So a cool thing about uh, these loops in Python is that it allows you actually to iterate through many different objects. And just to kind of go back on what it means to be iteratable or something to be iterable, it basically means that you can go over or go through every single element within the object. For example, every character within a sentence or every number within a list or every key within a dictionary. You can iterate so you can go one by one by one or you know, every other, however you want to set up, but you can actually go through each of these individual, uh, individual objects and whatnot. And so let's actually get into just the, the general format of, of loops and what that block of code kind of looks like. So let's start off really simple. Let's create my list. Okay. And we're gonna keep it simple one, two, and three. All right. And we're going to now create a for loop for it. So to create a for loop, we use the keyword for. We're also then going to put in an arbitrary um, identifier in a way, or arbitrary value. So for example, let's call this items. We're then going to use in, and we're going to put what it is that we want to iterate through, or what we want to go through. So in this case, we want to iterate through my list, the one, two, three. We use the semicolon, or sorry, use the colon, and then I can print the items. And as we can see, it'll iterate through my list. So I have one, two, and three. And just to show you that you can essentially use whatever you want for this value here, I can literally write for gav. And I can go print gav, I run it again, and it will still work. So this part here where I wrote gav, that can be whatever you want it is completely up to you. The key thing is where it's the, after the in, this has to be something you've defined previously. So let's do something else here. Let's show you uh, a bigger list. So we have my new list. So again, one through 10. And to show you what I mean, we'll go uh, for dogs in new list. All right, we're going to print dogs and we see one through 10. So again, that number or that value can be whatever you want it to be. You can also use the same format for printing out a string. So let's keep this new list here of one through 10, you know, four dogs in new list. But instead of dogs, let's change this to the rock is overrated. Okay, I run it and now I have the rock is overrated 10 times because it iterates through the list. So every single time it hits, it's going to print the rock is overrated. Cool, easy enough. Let's clear this out. All right. Okay, so we have our new list here. And so again, our one through 10. And let's say we wanted to print every other one. No, actually, sorry, let's say we wanted to print only the even number. So let's do that. So we're gonna create our for loop. So for num, so numbers in our new list, right? And this is where we're gonna put in our if statement. So if the number, so the numbers that we're gonna iterate through, mod two equals zero. So if we were to basically take this number, and then when you break it down, it'll have a remainder of zero is not even number, it'll have a remainder of one, right? So if we know the number has a remainder of zero, all right, we are going to say we're going to print and actually let's do some string formatting here as well to make it a little nicer. This is an even number. Okay, have the space, we're gonna put our curly brackets and it's going to be again the num. Close that up. And then let's use an else statement. So if it's not an even number, we're going to print or use string format again. So F, so this is an odd number. A little space, put in our num here as well. Close it up. Perfect. And let's run this. So now we can see, is this, yeah, perfect. So now we can see that for all the odd numbers. So number one, if it, as it iterates through our list, we know it's an odd number, one, this is even, so on and so forth, forth and it will actually break it down for us. Really cool stuff. This is great if you have a big massive list of numbers and you want to break it all down and see how many evens, how many odds, whatever the case may be. Perfect. So what else should we look at? We can also look at um, uh, kind of adding the sum of these numbers as well and kind of add them up as we go. So let's say I have a list sum and I'm gonna set it to equal zero, okay? And so for num in my new list, we're going to do the list sum. So zero, 
we're going to reassign it. So it's going to be the list sum plus my number. Okay. So plus the number we're iterating through. And let's do print list sum. So this allows me to see that the sum of my list, so the sum of one plus two plus three plus so on and so forth, is 55. But something else I can do is I can actually put this print sum, sorry, print list sum within it, run it, and I get a running tally of as it sums up. So one plus the two is three, three plus three is six, six plus four is 10, and so on and so forth. It's really, really cool stuff there. Let's clear this up here. So let's create a new string and we're going to say this is the story of a girl. Great song if you guys don't know it. And so with the for loops, we can actually iterate through a string as well. So for letter, so again, we chose the term letter here in new string. I want to print the letter. I run it and I get every single letter as well as the white spaces printed out. Pretty cool. We can also take this exact same, like same format and we can print whatever we want. So let's print, hey, and I run it and it's gonna print, hey, for the number of letters and white spaces that are within this sentence. Whether you ever wanna do this, who knows, but I mean, you can do it though, which is great. So as you iterate through, you can choose what it outputs for you. Okay, let's also take a look at how we can iterate through a tuple. So let's create a new tuple. So I have my tuple, and remember tuples use normal parentheses, one, two, three, four, uh, and five. All right, so I have my tuple here. So to iterate through my tuple, it's the exact same way of iterating through anything else. So I have four item in my tuple. I'm gonna say print item. And so it's gonna print every different variable for example, these integers here within my tuple. We can also utilize the for loops for tuple unpacking. And so what tuple unpacking is, is um, essentially, let's say you have a list of tuples, for example, where you, if you were to print it off, you would see each individual tuple, but well, let's say you wanted to pull the first value, or the second value, or whatever the case may be, tuple unpacking allows you to actually break this down. So let's create a new list. So we're gonna call it my list, right? And we're gonna create it as a list of tuples so one two comma let's do this three four comma five six comma seven eight all right so now we have a list and if we look at our list our list has tuples within it cool and for example if i do the length of my list oops my list i can see that it is four because there's only four items within it so there's one two three Four makes sense. So whenever you take the list uh, or the length of a list, it does, and if there's tuples within it, it won't look at actually each individual variable. It'll look at the list itself and kind of summarize it that way. Okay. So let's say I wanted to unpack my tuple now. So similar to before, I can do four item in my list. Okay, and I can go print item, and I see each tuple. I see each set of tuples, but you know, this isn't quite what I want. I want to see the ones, the twos, the threes as their own individual things and not within the actual tuple itself. So let's go ahead and close this up. Yeah, let's look at my list one more time. So we see my list. So let's do it this way. So to unpack it, what I would do is I go four and I would actually assign a variable here. Well, sorry, not assign, but I would choose a variable that contains the same format as my tuple. So in this case, a comma B shares the same format as the one comma two. So first and second one in my list, right? And I would go here, I go print A and I would print B. So when I run it, it actually unpacks it. So it'll print the A's and it will print the B's. But I, you know, I don't have to do this necessarily. I can choose just to print the B's, for example. I can also choose to just print the A's within it. So this tuple unpacking allows me to break it down and select exactly what I want. You can also, which is pretty common, is not even use the parentheses here. So I can run it again and I see I can print A, I can print B, I can even go print A and B in opposite order. So I can do print B then print A. So you can basically do whatever you want with it. You don't even need to use these parentheses, which is, uh, which is great. So let's 
I'll actually leave that there for now. Let's look at, let's say it was a bigger tuple actually. So let's do that. So let's say I have my list again, right? And let's turn it into a bigger tuple. So I'll copy and paste it over from here to make it a little bit easier. So now my list is a tuple with three within it. And let's say I wanted to iterate through this as well. So same thing for items in my list, right? I want to print, I can print item, right? So we'll see the, you know, the one, two, three in there. Let's get rid of this. And so if I wanted to unpack, it's the exact same format. So for A, B, and C in my list, okay? I can go print A, oops, print A, I can do print B, and I can do print C. And I run it and I have everything within it. And same thing, if I wanted to just do A and C, I can get rid of B, print it, and we get those. Cool, easy enough. Now let's take a look at, actually let's take a look at um, uh, iterating through dictionaries. I think that'd be a good next step here. So let's create a new dictionary. We're gonna do K1 is gonna be one. Let's do uh, K2 is equal to two. Let's do K3. K3 is three, three, and let's do K4 as well. Do K4 is four. All right, so I got my new dictionary here. Cool, looks good, we got a dictionary. Now, if I want to iterate through my dictionary, I would look at for, let's say item in D, so within the dictionary, print the item. And as you see, we actually only print the key values here, which is great in one way if you want to know what all the keys are, but what if you want to know the keys and the values, or what if you want to know just the values? Well, you can actually iterate through it using these for loops as well. So for example, if you wanted to see the whole dictionary and including the keys and its items, what you can do is, I'm gonna copy this, save ourselves some typing. We can use the dot items method. So now when I run it, I go print items, I can see the key value as well. I see the key and the value that is associated to it. I can also from here do tuple on, not, I mean, I can basically, yeah, I can do tuple unpacking with the dictionary as well. So let's look at this way. So if I have item, and value, right? And I want to print item and value. I can print it like so. Sorry, hit my finger. Uh, so I can print it like so. So I print my item and value. I can print them both individually. So now you can see they're separate like that. But I can also do it like this. I can print just item, right? So the very first one, I can also do print value. So just the second one. So that's tuple unpacking within the dictionary setting as well. You can also, if you were to do, let's get rid of this, um, let's say for X in D, so within that dictionary up above, I can also do dot values, right? That, and I can go print X, and same thing, I can get the values printed out for it as well. 